It reminds me of how much I don't like my credit union. Hey, <laughs> really? I don't. I don't. Um, but, you know, maybe I got to find out more information because well, I went to a different credit union recently and and I was talking to like the local manager and some other officers. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. A member of the board of directors. And yeah, I was telling them what I didn't like about my credit union is that I like I've gone to many branches and I talked to the workers and, you know, it's, it's not a hybrid cooperative. Um, it's, you know, just supposed to be a, like a. Well, anyways, mm -hmm. it's not it's not a worker co-op, the credit union. Um, that's yeah. one thing I, I would like to change that. But the other thing is, like, I've asked workers, is, is there any place for the members to talk to each other? And all the workers that I've met, they all say no. I'm sure, no, right? Yeah. And, and then I went to the, and this is the Self-Help Federal Credit Union. And then I, and then I went to, um, I think it was last year or two years ago, I went to the annual members meeting. And it was just online. And it was just like we were being talked to. And then there was a voting period. And... Um, it's just like it's just representative democracy, um, like how that how the credit union is run, and I don't like that. Um, and yeah, it was just a really weird election to where like it was just like secret ballot, I guess. And um, I, I don't I don't know that whatever system they're using, voting system, I don't know anything about that. I don't trust it. I, I don't you know. Um, I don't like the whole system. It stinks, man. And um, yeah, what else? Um, but interest, interestingly, uh, supposedly one of the branches of, the, of that credit union, a friend said that they talked to one of the managers or something, and they said that 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 branch. I think it's the Cottage Grove and 83rd branch in Chicago that supposedly like they're going to get like a million dollar grant toward like basically grassroots economics, but they didn't really know anybody to give that to. Um, hmm. And that was really cool that um, uh, <laughs> just discovering that there might be credit unions nearby that have money that they don't know how to spend. Um, so you know, ask around, but yeah, I'm still investigating my, my, the credit union that I go to. Um, I'm not, I would love to have a protest, you know, to democratize it or, you know, mm -hmm. support it becoming a worker co-op. Oh, oh, one funny thing that happened recently is I was trying to figure out how do you say credit union in Spanish? Cause you know, it didn't seem so obvious to me. And, and, <laughs> And so when I went, I went to the credit union and I asked one of the workers that she was talking in Spanish. And she was just like, boom, she's talking a lot to, to, um, this is the Pulaski look, the Pulaski location, not the 26 one, the one further south, uh, like around 40th or something. Um, she was talking in Spanish real fast, you know, and just like, boom, boom, boom. And then she finished with the client. And then I went and I said, Hey, um, how do you say credit union in Spanish? And she goes, Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> she didn't know either. Uh, mm. And so I was looking around. And so then I went to the, the federal, um, that fe the, like National Credit Union Association, because because the my credit union didn't have it in Spanish either on their website. How do you say credit union in Spanish? Mm. And I found out that for, for the national, uh, it's the NCUA that a lot of the credit unions NCUA. are part of. Mm -hmm. It turns out that it translate literally, that like their translation is, cooperative uh, oh no savings and credit cooperative like that's one translation of credit union in Sp uh, spanish like literal translation which that, that's interesting but anyway sorry uh, i'll get, kick it over to you matt if you got anything oh the uh yeah no i mean it's, um i you know for me credit unions didn't enter my life until um the Occupy movement, and there was a, somebody, I forget who, was pushing take your money out of the banks and put them in credit unions. There was a big movement at that point. And Need I had known money. about credit unions and thought about it, but I just hadn't done anything. And then at that moment, I was like, 
And I'd just come out of some bad experiences with Citibank, which was just, a Citibank is just awful for like, a, yeah. if you don't have money, so Citibank just mm -hmm. treats you like crap. So I was like, okay, ready to try it out. And um, yeah, it was much better. It was like, for the same reasons that Josh explained. I mean, it was just like better terms all around. Like, and the whole atmosphere, you go in, it's not that sort of creepy, overstressed workers who are being like, you know, I don't know what, driven to deny people loans or something. It just felt very like legit. They do, on the other hand, just feel very apolitical and very, they none of them, the people I've talked to, in terms mm -hmm. of tellers and other people don't really know that a credit union is a cooperative and are not really sure what that means. Um, and they don't use that as their pitch, like if to a new member, they don't talk to you about that aspect of it. They just treat it as if it's a bank, but it's a good bank. That's kind of the, where, where that one lies at the moment. But um, yeah, but I've been thinking recently, like, oh, I should get people out of these dang commercial banks, especially like Wells Fargo. I know a number of people who bank with Wells Fargo and they're really the worst. Like they've, you know, flat out criminal behavior that they've been busted for repeatedly. It's like, why does, they are. why would we keep doing that? But there was um, a few years back, Matt Kropp was from the Vermont Employee uh, Ownership Center was, um, doing a sort of study <coughs> of, co of credit unions. And he and I talked a little bit about the idea of like a credit union democracy movement. Like what would that look like to call for? What, what, what would be sort of a bill of rights that you would want for a credit union? Like some, what would be your demands on a credit union to make them more democratic? So there's some draft floating around out there that Matt and I came up with, but it never went anywhere. But was a good discussion. Let's bring it up because I'm gearing up to protest my credit union. <laughs> <laughs> if it doesn't get anywhere, but... well, you, you know the one, <laughs> the one thing about when you have organizations that are structurally democratic, but it's not used, right? Like it's not practiced. Those organizations often are pretty easy initially to launch a democratizing movement in it because the structures are there like you actually don't doesn't take a lot to organize enough people to have some serious power in the in the organization it's just you know once you get that organized then the other people who don't like what you're doing are also going to get organized but at the beginning it can go a long way before they kind of realize that that's going on so i don't know those basic Democratic structures actually have some serious uh, usefulness. Sorry, I had yeah. to let the dog in. Um, you know, oh, no, cool. uh, Wells Fargo, I had a friend who he was telling me about like one of his worst work experiences and it was at Wells yeah. Fargo. And it was during the like that housing bubble. The, the market yeah. crash, whatever, 2007, yeah. he said his job was, um, he was basically, how do you say, I don't know how to, I don't know how to explain this, uh, so well, but basically people who were gonna, um, be dispossessed of their homes, mm -hmm. um, who were like, there was no hope for them and who were continuing to try to talk to Wells Fargo. Um, his job was to talk to them uh oh, just to kind of like i guess i don't know I, I, this there's a term for it in english i forget what it is and and he sells one of the most stressful jobs that he had i guess trigger warning because it's like you know yeah violent but he said that uh he couldn't he couldn't sleep or whatever because people would be calling and begging for the home to mm. not be taken away and he said that that uh they would they would say that they were going to commit suicide. They're going to lose everything, lose their family. And they would also give him suicide statistics. There was so like he, his understanding was that people were committing suicide from losing their homes. And mm. so the stress of like, just knowing that he's not helping them out and just kind of like facilitating some of these people, um, 
to committing suicide, wasting their time. Um, he said it was a really horrible job. Mm. Um, yeah, Wells Fargo, and you know, there was it Wells Fargo. They were like increasing. What bank was it? They're in the um, in twenty twenty. They're like increasing the uh, like. Uh, uh, fees that they were hitting people with man there's no mercy i think it was there. wells wells fargo was the one that was what was that they were most famous for the <laughs> they have a number well, the of mortgages purchases. right they were like they were uh, they were oh, they had some bounty or something i forget what the story was but they were paying they're yeah basically they paying it. their employees to falsify records or to do something like that mm -hmm. they're putting forced place forced Force placed insurance, I think, is what they called it. That they were basically like signing people up for extra home insurance uh, without telling them. They were encouraging <laughs> employees. They had like a eight. They had to. They're trying to sign every customer up for eight different accounts, eight different like services of some variety. Yeah. Be because uh, I think it was John Stump at the time was the CEO. He because he had this slogan: eight is great. So sign people oh, up for eight okay. different things. And that was a big, there was a big movement, the, the move your money campaign and a lot of the criminality coming out and especially about Wells Fargo, although Bank mm -hmm. of America, Citibank were yeah, also, and famous. Were also yeah. big offenders. Um, but uh, I wrote <laughs> um, a love letter from Occupy Missoula to Wells Fargo. Um, <laughs> Because you know, opposites attract, kind of thing. So it was a satirical kind of. Oh, that's um, hilarious! <laughs> organizational love letter, and it got a little bit of uh, got passed around the internet a little bit uh, to occupy people. But it was, uh, but yeah, there. Wells Fargo is terrible. Uh, I think any credit union is probably going to be better than just about any bank. Um, and so, Josh, yeah, at age five. Josh, at age five, you weren't thinking about crypto and DAOs and the yeah. blockchain. <laughs> that was, it was it was 1984, my friend. <laughs> yeah. yeah, my friend's son. He's like 12 years old. He's thinking about buying crypto. I'm like, whoa, what? Oh Life yeah. is weird. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. No, that was. I don't know. My uh, my folks were big uh, big credit union advocates right from the. To get go they had a you know got their first home loan mortgage in the 70s from a credit union in glendive montana and had had, a, had an account with them probably i'm sure they still do you know, hmm. um, yeah all right so what's uh what's your most positive co-op experience